Cholestitoma. So cholestitoma, bits on cholestitoma, I will tell a briefing about this. It's a three-dimensional epidermal connective tissue structure. Three-dimensional epidermal, epidermal connective tissue structure. Always in the form of a sac. Always in the form of a sac. Okay. Occupies the space which is available. Occupies the space which is available. Erodes the bone. Erodes the bone. Okay. Tends to recur even after complete removal. Tends to recur even after complete removal. A three-dimensional epidermal connective tissue structure always in the form of a sac occupies the spaces available, okay, erodes the bone and tends to recur even after complete removal, that is cholestetoma. Misnomer for cholesterol is present, this is wrong, oma is not a tumor, so both are wrong names only, okay, neither it is cholesterol nor it is oma tumor. So epidermal connective tissue structure, epidermal means stratified squamous epithelium, okay. Primary cholestetoma, secondary cholestetoma, okay, congenital cholestetoma. Congenital cholestetoma, just before the buds itself, they are formed, okay. So, middle ear, petrous apex and cerebellar pontal angle. These are the three common places for congenital cholestetoma. Middle ear, petrous apex and cerebellar pontal angle. Middle ear, that is middle ear, petrous apex. Apex of the petrous temporal bone. This is the apex of the petrous temporal bone or left temporal bone. And then cerebellar pontal angle within the brain, wherein you have got acoustic neuroma. Cerebellar pontal angle. These are three common sites. That is congenital cholestetoma. Okay. Primary cholestetoma without any disease that is occurring. Okay. Without any disease in the ear that is occurring. Primary cholestetoma. Primary acquired, secondary acquired. So congenital or acquired. So acquired related to primary or secondary. Secondary means already diseased ear. The, the ear is having disease. I am already having a safe type of CSOM. I am getting cholestetoma. That is secondary acquired. Primary means the ear seems to be normal, but there is some type of cholestetoma. Like any retraction pocket, the ear is, the, can, the tympanic membrane is sucked inside because of negative pressure. So, wherein you have got all theories, okay. So, primary cholestetoma is by means of implantation theory, basal cell hyperplasia, okay, and squamous metaplasia, okay, squamous metaplasia. And secondary cholestetoma is by migration and metaplasia. So, cholestetoma, based on that, primary treatment of middle ear cholestetoma. So, cholestetoma is a three, uh, same thing, three-dimensional epidermal connective tissue structure, tends to recover even after complete removal. Even after complete removal means the treatment is surgery only. So, when you find cholestetoma, there is no chance for any other option, surgery only. Medical treatment is only managing the disease for some extent. For cholestetoma, surgery is the treatment of choice. What is the treatment of choice? MRM. So, blindly remember cholestetoma, surgery, MRM. So, modified radical mastoidectomy, modified radical mastoidectomy. So, medical and surgical treatment is given, but treatment of choice means, okay, okay you want to get a dog or a fox means, I say I want a fox. So, you cannot get a dog and show that uh, it is looking like a fox and you can you manage with the fox, that is not the issue. I want fox only. So, that is specifically if they are asking treatment of middle ear, primary treatment of cholestetoma is surgery only. They want to understand your understanding ability. Okay, so many questions you can answer like this. Five-year boy diagnosed to have posterior superior retraction pocket, posterior superior retraction pocket, cholestetoma. All would constitute a part of management except posterior superior retraction pocket. Okay. So audiometry, mastoid exploration, tympanoplasty, and myringoplasty. So what could be the probable answer over here? Here we want they want you to understand about the difference between. Audiometry has to be done definitely. How much loss? Okay. So I lost the ear sensation, hearing sensation. How much loss you will be asking? I will go for audiometry. As I already told you, modified radical mastoidectomy, the treatment of choice, TOC, treatment of choice is MRM. Okay. Tympanoplasty and myringoplasty. So when I am going into the ossicle status, it is called as tympanoplasty. When I am not going into the ossicular status, it is myringoplasty. So that is the difference. So, just going to the ear, middle ear, I am just changing the tympanic membrane and coming back. Okay. I am just changing the tympanic membrane and coming back. But I am changing the tympanic membrane and also repairing the ossicular damage caused by the cholestetoma, it is tympanoplasty. Just putting a graft is myringoplasty. Without looking anything, blindly putting a graft is myringoplasty. For example, fat myringoplasty. I find a hole in the tympanic membrane, I take some fat from the lobule, I put it there. That is fat myringoplasty. That's it. Okay. But tympanoplasty includes 
eradication of the disease, reconstruction of the hearing mechanism plus or minus graft. So, answer would be myringoplasty. So, based on this explanation. So, except means you have to be exceptionally perfect in that particular answer. Yeah? They did not give that. Okay. So, they did not ask that. So, most of the times, pre diagnosed posterior superior retraction pocket. Okay. You need not understand about that. So, posterior superior retraction pocket leading to primary disease only. Okay. Retraction pocket is not known why it is occurring. Okay. Until then, the disease here was supposedly normal. Okay. It is not congenital cholesteatoma. It is primary. As far as you are asking, it should be primary only. The further questions, we will be seeing that. Okay. You will get explanation for everything, but in a zigzag manner because we are not going as a class, we are going as a uh, sub uh, MCQs. Okay. I will try to explain you there then when I get it. The posterior superior retraction pocket, if allowed to progress, it will lead to sensory neural hearing loss, primary cholesteatoma, tympanous sclerosis, tertiary cholesteatoma. There is nothing like tertiary cholesteatoma till now, as far as I do not know, but maybe it is there in some other uh, books. Okay, tertiary cholesteatoma is not used, so keep it aside. Tympanous sclerosis. Tympanous sclerosis is nothing but a chalky white precipitate occurring inside the temporal bone. So, whatever the pathology occurring in the ear is not a ear pathology, it is a pathology of the temporal bone and it is a representative of temporal lobe of the brain. Temporal bone is a representative of temporal lobe of the brain because there is auditory hearing center, area number 41, Broadman's area. So, always remember the tympanous sclerosis. Tympano means something related to mediator, sclerosis means heart. Sclerosing mucositis and osteoclastic periostatus, these are the two pathologies. Sclerosing mucositis, mucosa gets sclerosis, osteoclastic periostitis. So, these are the two pathologies leading to tympanous sclerosis. So, but that is not related to posterior superior retraction pocket. If there is any problem in the middle ear or in the problem in the tympanic membrane, it leads to this pathology. Sensory neural hearing loss is not directly related to retraction pocket. Retraction pocket is a pathology in the tympanic membrane. Okay. When there is pathology in the tympanic membrane, it leads to conductive deafness. It is not sensory neural hearing loss. Okay. The answer here would be primary cholesteatoma. As this particular thing say, says you, this particular thing, the eustachian tube dysfunction it is leading to pulling of negative pressure, attic retraction pocket, okay, pars, posterior superior retraction pocket. What is posterior superior region called? Pars placida, okay, attic region, pars placida. It is leading to something called as cholesteatoma, primary acquired cholesteatoma. So, acquired cholesteatoma is primary and secondary. Secondary is, if you are already having a disease called as CSOM and it is going to give some cholesteatoma, it is secondary acquired. So, secondary acquired, the pathology uh, is being explained by this. So, all these pictures I am uh, taking the courtesy of uh, Dhingra textbook or the standard textbook. Once you see in the textbook, you will understand it very easily. Okay. That is clearly given like uh, because of this particular thing, it will be primary cholesteatoma. There might be some, I corrected this something, uh, maybe some mistake in that also. We try to correct this. Way, okay. Because in one thing it is given as primary and one thing it is given as secondary. Okay. Once again. 30 year old male having attic cholesteatoma, attic disease, dangerous disease always, okay. Cholesteatoma of the left ear with lateral sinus thrombophlebitis, lateral sinus thrombophlebitis, which of the following is the operation of choice, lateral sinus thrombophlebitis, it is a intracranial complication of the cholesteatoma, left ear cholesteatoma, cholesteatoma you thought means always you go for uh, modified radical mastodectomy modified radical mastodectomy is the answer actually. So, as far as the options are concerned, intact canal wall mastodectomy, simple mastodectomy with tympanoplasty, canal wall down mastodectomy, mastodectomy with cavity obliteration. So, answer here will be canal wall down mastodectomy. Canal wall down, the other name for modified radical mastodectomy, okay. Modified radical mastodectomy. I want to give a small uh, explanation regarding this one. So, for example, this is the uh, tympanic membrane and uh, this is the mastoid cavity that you are having, okay. So, the canal wall down and canal wall up procedures, you want to know the difference, canal wall up procedures, okay. So, once you lose the game, they say you are down, this I am trying to give, explain you basically, you are down, that means you are not down, you are down means you are perished, okay. There is something called as posterior meatal and lateral attic wall, PM and LA. I am trying to explain you as simple as that. Okay. This is the tympanic membrane, this is the mastoid cavity. So, if you see the tympanic membrane, there will be meatal wall, is it or not? This is the external artery meatus, posterior meatus, which is a bony wall, posterior meatal and lateral attic wall. So, here will be your 
sparse placida so what is canal wall down procedure means middleyer attic and mastoid cavity are made into a single cavity single cavity by removing the posterior meatal and lateral attic wall okay posterior meatal and lateral attic wall converting the three spaces into a single space posterior meatal and lateral attic wall are removed in toto or removed and then you are making middleyer attic and mastoid cavity ma'am middleyer attic and mastoid cavity into a single cavity which is kidney or c shaped and putting the graft completely you are putting the graft completely and doing something called as canal plasty canal plasty something called as canal plasty middleyer attic and mastoid cavity are made into a single cavity and canal plasty you are cutting the canal and opening you can just see the canal as big as possible all these are exteriorized the problem for cholesteatoma most commonly is because of lack of ventilation you are providing some ventilation so removing all the disease and providing some ventilation putting a graft so middle ear and mastoid cavity why you should you call this modified radical mastoidectomy as canal wall down what are the canal wall down procedures Atticotomy, modified radical mastoidectomy, and radical mastoidectomy (AMR). Atticotomy, you are removing the attic. Atticotomy, modified radical mastoidectomy, and radical mastoidectomy. Okay. So this posterior meatal and lateral attic wall are removed, and then you are communicating all the spaces in a single space so that there is ventilation maintained, all the disease is maintained. Once you are removing, the wall is down. so this is so confusing terminology that you won't understand canal wall down you are removing wall removing the wall canal wall up okay he is up in the he is up in the competition he won the competition they say like that the wording is so confusing canal wall up means this particular middle ear and attic this middle ear and this particular mid mastoid cavity the middle wall that is there that is posterior meatal wall is up it is there it is not removed canal wall up procedure this is canal wall up procedure and this is canal wall down procedure this is canal wall down and this is canal wall up so canal wall up procedures are not done for this cholesteatoma but it they can be done in a technical aspect they can be done once the patient is ready for regular follow up okay for regular follow up and patient should be a highly educated person if they are not educated person i don't know some uh, remote village the patient is coming to me i am doing a surgery i ask him to come after one month no no i am busy with the agriculture he will be saying so by the way if he is not coming regularly i cannot do this canal wall up procedure if he is coming regularly i can do this canal wall up procedure like a educated man whenever he comes to me i want to clean the whatever debris collected i will do this canal wall down so i will do is only for person who are not ready for the follow up okay canal wall down procedure that is the difference between these two things canal wall up and canal wall down so as you can see right now modified radical mastoidectomy is a part of a procedure called as canal as a whole the procedure is called as canal wall down procedure and this so atticotomy modified radical mastoidectomy and radical mastoidectomy okay is nothing but canal wall up means you are retaining the canal so you should have mastoidectomy with cavity obliteration what is this cavity obliteration you are putting some cartilage or some pieces over there to obliterate some muscle pieces you know, to obliterate the cavity simple mastoidectomy with tympanoblasty this canal wall up can be called as simple mastoidectomy with intact canal wall okay canal wall is intact intact canal wall mastoidectomy so this should be understood whenever you are calling canal wall down it includes atticotomy modified radical mastoidectomy and radical mastoidectomy posterior superior retraction pocket allowed to progress it will lead to primary cholesteatoma as you have known so posterior superior quadrant is most dangerous why because it is related to attic if this is the right ear so this is the posterior superior quadrant it is related to attic and related to mastoid disease so why it should be so dangerous means it is directly related to tegment tympani erosion leads to middle ear mid middle cranial fossa uh, this erosion okay which of the following is included in the levenson criteria for congenital cholesteatoma so for congenital cholesteatoma what are the criteria they will be asking okay ferguson criteria levenson criteria anderson criteria they can give you a question so levenson criteria is for congenital cholesteatoma white mass medial to normal tympanic membrane and definite history of otorrhea history of prior otological procedures eticoantral perforation of the tympanic membrane 
congenital cholecystitis i told you it is in the middle ear petrous apex which are there inside only we don't know that what happens is once we are doing some surgery sometimes we accidentally find cholecystitis if you are not going for a ct scan hrct temporal bone we accidentally find a cholecystitis that particular cholecystitis can be called as congenital cholecystitis it is slowly developing okay sometimes it erodes the bone because of collagenases and this osteoases or proteases inside that are present it is damaging the bone also so that is answer will be white mass medial to the normal tympanic membrane so <coughs> you imagine a pearl that is present medial to the tympanic membrane tympanic membrane is normal it is accidentally discovered that is levenson's criteria and these are all opposite given there is no perforation as such there is no history of otolia so the, he has just modified the levenson criteria and given as a question so history of prior otological procedures not there definitive history of otolia not there atico antral perforation of tympanic membrane is not included these are all given opposite central part of the cholecystitoma contains answer is keratin debris so you should know this is given based on this particular one this is a bone fibrous stroma matrix and keratin okay so how would you remember this bollywood bollywood film dekhke maza karo okay bollywood film bhai outer part is a bone f is a fibrous matrix m is a matrix and then k is a keratin mass the end intention of the this particular uh, cholecystitoma is to collect the keratin keratin means something related to hair hair protein something like that this stratified squamous epithelium i told you it is a epidermal connective tissue structure epidermis means keratin all rough keratin this keratin mass is being produced so bone fibrous stroma matrix and keratin mass so this is a question that is uh, given based on this particular picture whole smelling ear discharge with presence of pale granulation in ear is an uh, adolescent boy suggest to walk cholecystitoma exostosis uh, otomycosis and malignant otitis externa foul smelling ear discharge so foul smelling scanty profuse is in safe type of csp foul smelling scanty is in the case of this uh, atico antral disease which is related to pale granulation tissue and also in boys as a show of cholecystitoma okay foul smelling fishy smell is because of this collagenases and proteases the pro collagenases and proteases they damage the bone so whenever there is bone damage like your osteomyelitis patient you might have seen in the ward of a orthopedics there will be foul smelling because of this particular cholecystitoma you know the following structures is not at immediate risk of erosion by cholecystitoma not at immediate risk okay so there is a not knot not put here by putting a word called as not knot not so it is a opposite negative question okay long process of the incus is it eroded fallopian canal containing fascia no is it eroded so horizontal lateral central canal is it eroded base plate of stapes so answer here will be d d will be the answer why because i'll tell you so long incudal process i call it as lip 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 is the most commonly involved structure that is in the cholecystitoma so cholecystitoma damages the bones okay osicles are also bones as i told you synovial joint in the first question so long process of the incus is the most commonly damaged bone by means of cholecystitoma fallopian canal the canal for the facial nerve is called as gabriel fallopius is a scientist who gave this canal for facial nerve this facial nerve horizontal segment of the facial nerve is being dehiscent and also vertical segment so horizontal segment is called showing congenital dehiscences so facial nerve has got horizontal part and then vertical part so this horizontal part of the can fallopian canal is more commonly dehiscent and as horizontal or lateral semicircular canal lateral semicircular canal is also more commonly dehiscent and base plate of stapes is least commonly dehiscent okay 